Can you read it? Yeah, yeah. Can read it. <coughs> so, first or second? Second. <coughs> uh, okay. Never was I to pray for myself except as my requests bore on my usefulness to others. Then only might I expect to receive. Okay, so I'm a member of 12 Step Fellowships and one of the core books in 12 Steps is the big book. For releasing addictions and uh, using a spiritual, uh, the spiritual 12-step program and uh, I've released many addictions using that. Um, one of the suggestions in there is um, to align prayers, uh, it's useful to align prayers with also an emphasis on being useful to others as opposed to just doing prayers just for a selfish or self-interested way. So, you know, uh, just making a bit of fun, just saying, please God, can I have a Ferrari for Christmas? Uh, or God, can I have a girlfriend? Um, or whatever it is. You know, to align prayers um, with a bearing on how one can be useful to others is given as a, as a, <clears throat> as a form of a general guidance, so that the, the prayers are, I would say, of a higher vibration. So, I can, I can bring it in also from a Course in Miracles perspective as well. So, the ego, uh, as, as one, bec you know, the, the also bringing in Hawkins' work, there's different vibrations. One, there's high identification with the, with the thoughts and there's a lot of repressed feelings, then the ego, the sense of ego becomes stronger. Hence, meaning that the sense of separation or the sense of being very identified with the body and the thoughts become stronger and so there's this sense of self-centeredness and the nature of the ego becomes very much about me, me, me all the time. What's in it for me? And it also at very low levels of consciousness, actually what's quite interesting um, and it's also my experience is that when the idea of selfishness is actually one is not conscious of others. One is not conscious. When I was in active addiction, I wasn't really having the consciousness or the awareness that other people had feelings, uh, that my, how my actions would bear upon others. It was more a case of what I desperately needed and how I could get that from the universe, people, places and situations. So that level of consciousness in strong ego identification, especially in the addictive fields, when one is obsessed with, for example, alcohol or drugs or whatever, you know, there, there's an obliteration of, of awareness on and one's actions and interactions and others. So I had food addiction, so I would be quite happy to probably like take all the biscuits when people aren't looking and have with, with, with no relation to how others would feel or, or that. So, so when you're doing these prayers, they align you with spiritual principles, even if you're at a low vibration, you start to become aware that, uh, start to think, and you're becoming in alignment with the highest spiritual vibration of awareness of others. So, you know, my prayer could be like, uh, please may I, uh, you know, one of the great things um, uh, that I got from one of my spiritual teachers was that one, the higher one's uh, spiritual alignment becomes one, one's actions and one's deeds become in alignment with the interests of the highest good of all concerned. So as you, as you, as you start not thinking of yourself as a, a separate entity, you start seeing that every, everything is linked. You know, there is a connection between everyone and everything. When we get to the Course in Miracles, we take this to, to the ultimate level, where we're starting to talk about oneness and also the experience of oneness through dissolving uh, the ego. So that then there is a, a there, the, and then one's actions at the higher levels of consciousness uh, automatically without any ego involvement become that of love and harmony for all concerned, you see. So the, usually when one is in active ego addiction, because one is so disconnected from the, the source, from the light, from the sense of wholeness, then there's a, uh, an, an externalized projection that if, if the ego got something external to itself, then it would get wholeness or completeness. 
So it's like this feeling of spiritual disconnection. And if I got a pint of alcohol, or if I got a cake, then I'd be, com or if I got a girlfriend, then I'd be complete on achieving that thing. So this prayer then gives you the, the you know, to start to think of, you know, if, if it's food, I'm praying, you know, to eat in accordance with God's will. So it's like, you know, if there's like, I don't know, five of us in the room and there's five donuts, then, you know, my prayer would be, you know, help me to be, you know, to think of others when I'm eating, you know, not just to think of myself. Or if I'm in, uh, or if it's, I'm looking after a family, not just to think of spending all the money on myself, but to think of the needs of the wife and the kids you see, in my prayers of how I use money, because I'd be selfish and might spend all the money on my alcohol consumption or on my food consumption. So, also, if you take that, you know, um, in those programs there's a great emphasis to also on service. So not to think of oneself to try and be helpful to others. And actually, here's the thing, it's like when you start acting and behaving and praying in that way, it takes you on to those higher vibrations. And it's also, The Course in Miracles also has a, has a lesson on it, you know, something like what you give, you receive. Um, I think what you teach, you strengthen in yourself. I think there's some Course in Miracles lessons along that. So it's, it's almost, if you like, like an abundance thing, you see, rather than like me running around trying to find out if there's any biscuits in the room, like let me try and help another person suffering with food addiction. And then I'm already tapping into this, like there is enough, and I'm teaching that there is enough, and then my vibration is starting to align with that higher vibration in the universe when I'm filled without needing to act in a selfish way. So that's that thing. And the, the, there was another line in there about um, offering myself to God and um, something about letting go of sin. And... Can I read the first? Yes. Can yeah. me do it? Yeah. Okay. There I humbly offered myself to God, as then I understood Him to do with me as He would. I placed myself unreservedly under His care and direction. I admitted for the first time that of myself I was nothing, that without Him I was lost. I ruthlessly faced my sins and became willing to have my newfound friend take them away root and branch. I have not had a drink since. Well, that, that, I mean, yes, uh, if you don't go into the um, sort of uh, negative religious connotations of that, you know, the, I mean, it's written in the essence of someone who's like killing themselves with addiction, with uh, alcohol mm. or food or drugs, and it's just asking you know, to be, to surrender to the program um, and to uh, into the care of God, you know, my new friend, because obviously in active addiction, the friend is alcohol or food or, or drugs or whatever it is. So I don't want that to be my friend any longer. Let, let me surrender all my thoughts and my uh, behaviors to uh, a higher power. And in the 12 step program is to look at where one has been selfish before and to make restitution and amends. So that, I mean, that's, I mean, sin maybe has a loaded connotation, but it's like, if I, you know, like if I came here and I robbed the biscuits from, the, from this location, is to just come back, you know, uh, and to face what I've done and maybe offer a brand new packet of biscuits and say, sorry, you know, I took them when you weren't looking. So that's that, and, um, you know, which is kind of hilarious if you look at it on, on one level. But then it, it then takes out the, the feeling of guilt, you know, and th those feelings of guilt stop one from vibrating at those vibrations of feeling at one with the universe. The ego tends to hold on and remember, yes, you know, I need to feel bad in this place because, you know, I hope no one remembers or maybe I've got some crumbs on my coat that, you know, whatever. So you, you, you have that kind of thing. And then, and that's my experience, that once you do the Tosta program, um, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of um, what the surrendering, the surrendering of one's will, the surrendering of one's behaviours, uh, for anyone who's done that before, 
um, you could say that the, I mean, if you were to take it in, the, in terms of the course, you know, to have an ego identity is actually, you actually feel worse than if you surrender your ego identity. So the more you surrender the ego identity, i.e. The, the, being the controller, telling God what, how the universe should be all the time, um, if you surrender that, then actually the, the, the feelings of peace and beingness and presence and then intuitive capacity to move in life and be in the flow of life increase. So to the ego it seems like a loss, but actually to the consciousness it's a gain uh, to do that. So I know like some people have practiced meditation and there's a sense of absolute presence and well-being and beingness in there and there's no like addictive urges uh, in that place so it's just surrendering that nature and trusting that um, in letting that go that things get better and better okay.